All right, everybody. Uh, today I want to do just a very quick video. Uh, this will be part one of a three-part series on the world famous, patented, trademarked, one and only invented by me. And <laughs> like I said on some of my other Twitter things, if you don't know the joke, well, you're missing out. But don't take it personal. I will make the disclaimer now on why I'm going to articulate the two antennas the way I am. I am referring to a speaker wire antenna as the KG6HQD speaker wire antenna. I have a video uh, that I can link up here about it. You can find it in my channel. Uh, it's how to make this antenna, some rough designs for it. And I'll probably do a follow-up one on a better, uh, better bill with some more stuff. I've added a few things to it. But anyways, this will be the KG6HQD speaker wire antenna versus uh, the formerly known K9 ARV or Tony. A lot of you guys know Tony. Uh, linked dipole. Uh, Tony did not uh, build this antenna. Another ham did, built it for him. Um, but that's what we're calling this because that's what it was called when it was sold on eBay as the K9 ARV linked dipole. Uh, this one right here. Um, but with this, you also have to have some of this stuff. This is RG316 coax. And I'm gonna talk about these items uh, side by side for just a minute right here as the intro video to this three-part series. Okay, so what's the most important thing for me and why did I build this antenna? For me, I do summits on the air. That's why you're here, you've seen my channel. If you haven't, welcome to the channel. Check out some of the other videos. Follow me on Twitter because I'm all over the Twitter. That's where you can connect with me most. Um, also, I've got an Instagram page. Everything is at KG6HQD. I will tell you this in advance. My Facebook page, I generally reserve for just my family and very close friends, so don't get offended if I don't accept your friend request uh, there. Some people I do, but but not everybody. I'm just, just personal reasons. Anyways, Twitter though for sure, and Instagram, I'm, I'm there every so often, but Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. So uh, connect with me on Twitter if you got more questions, and of course right here on YouTube, subscribe, ring the bell, make comments, all that kind of fun stuff. If you do leave a comment, do me a favor, make sure if your username does not include your call sign, your name and where you're from, that always helps me, especially if I talk to you on some summits later on. So, what are we talking about today again? We are talking about the KG6 HQD speaker wire antenna versus the K9 ARV link dipole. And for purposes of going one-to-one -one or head-to-head, -head, I should say, not one-to-one, -one, uh, we're gonna do just a 20 meter section of this antenna compared to this antenna that was cut and built and designed for 20 meters. I know my speaker wire antenna was cut and tuned exactly on 20 meters. This antenna was sent to me by Tony. It has another link section for 40 meters. Uh, I believe, but I don't recall because there was some time there that when I threw it on the meter, when I got it, my analyzer, I do believe it was on 20 meters, but I don't recall 100%. And I set this thing up in my backyard for a while when I was running some testing with it, with a link section on it. I had some good windy days and actually it got, it got blown down. There is a possibility, full disclosure, this wire, if it wasn't even tuned, let's say it was or wasn't, either way, when I did the field test last Saturday, the wire could have stretched. Uh, it could not be resonant to begin with. Although it came with these very nice uh, connections on the end, gave me the impression that it was already tuned. Uh, that's how it was terminated when I got it. Uh, and then there's the uh, the centerpiece, of course. So I made the assumption this thing was tuned. I, I, again, I thought it was, but anyways, I digress. So uh, I initially said on Twitter, RG174, this is actually a 25 foot piece of RG316 with uh, B and C connections on the end. I'm gonna talk about these, this is part of this video. So you have this part uh, right here as well. So these are the two antennas we're gonna talk about. So what does it cost to make uh, these antennas or buy this antenna? It probably cost me less than 10 bucks. I would say probably $8 to make this antenna. I buy a 100 foot spool for let's just say 50 bucks. I can make uh, three or four antennas with that. I mean, 50 bucks, that's good high quality wire. Uh, you get some wire for 20 bucks. You can find some wire in your backyard, whatever. We're looking sub $10 and that's even throwing a bigger price tag on it. Just this uh, RG316 for the 25 foot reel when I bought on Amazon, it was $21.95 just for the RG316. This antenna, when it was designed, was sold on eBay, and I don't recall the price. Tony, if you're watching this, I would appreciate it if you put the price in there. It is a factor. Uh, somewhere I was getting a couple of estimates, anywhere from 50 to $90, but again, that was for the link section for 40 meters as well. 
Uh, let's just say it was $20. Uh, but anyways, you can see already for the uh, K9 ARV version to make it functional at a minimum, you're looking at at least $40 to $50 versus this one, you're looking at less than $10. So there's the price factor. Uh, the speaker wire antenna, I weighed it out. It's 148 grains or grams, 5.2 ounces. You have to weigh the coax with this antenna. You're looking at 225 grams or 7.9 ounces. So you have a heavier antenna and a more expensive antenna for this dipole. Now, Tony's gonna say, but it's a much better antenna. It sounds better. Um, well, let me say this. Uh, one of the unique aspects for me when I do my summits on air portability is yes, I'm looking to shave as much weight as possible. This is a, a much cheaper antenna to build, to carry, to fit in the palm of your hand, and there's no connections here you have to worry about. I mean, I put ring terminals on here, which are what, a couple pennies? Uh, and I also, at one point in time, didn't have that. In my video, you'll see how I just loop it inside of a piece of plastic, whatever, so that I can, I can deploy it. So for sub $10, and a lighter antenna, you have the speaker wire antenna. You have to use coax to make this work, so you have to put the two together. That's where I'm coming up with the $40 to $50 range being about right. Now, I will say this, uh, whoever built this, I think it was N9SAB, I think it's Tim Ortiz, if I'm not mistaken, I apologize if I got that wrong, but uh, it's, it's very well designed, it's very nice. By the way, this is a connector that I had to put on there, a BNC to a PL259 connector. Had to have that to run the 316. I sure in the heck am not bringing LMR 400 or anything that would require RG36 or what is it, uh, 1318. And I'm not doing that, not for backpacking stuff. I'm trying to make this as small and portable. So you have to add the connector. So there's another item you gotta buy. But forget the connector for right now. This thing is actually designed pretty nice. Uh, you know, this is thinner wire. I would say this is probably 26 gauge wire. So there is a difference, 22 gauge wire, 26 gauge wire. There is a variance there. Uh, I am trying to find some 26 gauge speaker wire so I can make one of these uh, with this thin of wire. I think that'd be pretty epic. Uh, maybe I can get 24 gauge or something, get just a little bit smaller. But anyway, so I like how these things are terminated. It's a very clean and, and uh, nice looking antenna. I mean, it's got this loop in here for connecting it. That's just simply to link it off with uh, the other section and it's just a, uh, a bullet connector there. Uh, very, very nice, good idea, great design. I like it a lot. Um, I had to put this little snap link on there because that's how I, I hang it up there and that's of course just how to hang the, the dipole up. So, but one thing to keep in mind, in essence these antennas are exactly the same. They are a radiating element and an offsetting element right here, your positive and negative from your terminals or what's putting your signal out, your yin and your yang so to speak. Same thing there. The only real difference between the two is that chunk hanging right there compared to this chunk right here. The feed line. That is the big point of contention with the Twitter argument or the Twitter debate, however you want to call it. Uh, everybody's saying uh, the speaker wire, lossy, 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 lossy. It's so lossy, it's, it's not even usable, it's ridiculous. And uh, well, uh, I would just disagree with that. So this is a preliminary video and I've got a, a channel. You're on my channel now, I've got a channel full of videos to prove this works. It's, I'm not saying at all that this is a bad antenna, and I'm not saying at all that this won't do the job and it won't work. I'm not saying that at all, never have. What I'm saying is there's a couple intangibles, and some of the ones I want to point out is this is heavier and bulkier and more expensive. This is more durable. Um, when you're out in the field, I did this on Saturday, I stepped on this, uh, this dropped in the dirt, these just BNC connectors, but you know, if you step on that and you crush that and there's rocks and stuff all over the place out here, uh, you're done, you're not gonna fix that. You're, you're, you hiked all the way up to the hill and now you can't even play radio. One time, I didn't have this connector. And I leave it on here now just because of that. There's a video I have where I, need, I said slow down because I did not have this connector. I couldn't connect the antenna, I couldn't use this antenna and I had to deploy the speaker wire antenna. Uh, with the speaker wire antenna, there is an item that I do use to connect it to the radio. Uh, in all fairness, I should probably add that in there. It's just simply a BNC to binding post connector. So the only way that I'm gonna get this onto my KX2 is a BNC to binding post. So you've seen this in my videos. I basically take the speaker wire, connect it to the terminal points right here, just unscrew it, put it in. I could put little bullet connectors on there and I can plug it in the top if I want, that's fine too. If it breaks, cut it off a pocket knife, stick it in there, who cares? I step on this all the time, so it's no big deal. And then it just clips right onto the radio, boom, just like so. 
So it's really simple. But this is not anywhere near the dirt when I'm setting it up. So the, for setting it up, durability. I've had this thing blown in, in some rock and wind. Um, it's still together, that knot, I can pull it tight, just like that, it, it never comes free. I mean, you can even put a little bit of liquid tape on there. Or what you, I, I haven't, and it still holds. So there's some positives there. Uh, I think one of the most significant positives for me with this antenna, and this is the big deal for me, this is a big deal. I'll take, Tony, let's just say you're right, and I've got 50% uh, loss compared to this. I don't know what the numbers are, DB, 2DB, I don't care, because I am making consistent contacts across the United States with this. That's good enough for me. I'm still gonna do head to head because I wanna see exactly how much loss and everything else. There's a lot of claims about how bad this is. But what I'm gonna say is the price of learning how to build an antenna for as cheap as it is, if you mess it up, who cares? This is a, in essence, a store-bought item. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's your direction you wanna go. But you know what? I made this with my kids and I use my antenna analyzer, and I got to actually, when you take your general and your extra class and your technician class courses, you learn about all this antenna theory or some, you may, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but you get to put that into play and you start understanding what propagation is. You start understanding what a wavelength is, a half wave, a quarter wave, and all those different things. So you, when you make this, you're gonna have some trial and error. You're gonna have some minor adjustments to make that might be a little bit different than the video that I posted. That's okay. I talk about that, by the way, uh, you know, I'll get to this in a minute about deployment, how to do it, but they're set up as an inverted V. Both these will be set up as an inverted V. And with that, one of the ways to impact uh, your SWR is simply how you tune this thing, the length of it, but what impacts the resistance or the, the ohms, I mean, the Z as it's known, is a couple things. One, how far those legs are off of the ground and at what angle, how close they are together, how far away they are and how far they are off of the ground. That impacts the Z. Also, the Z being the impedance, of course. Also, how much of the antenna you have folded back on itself at the, term, at the end point of the antenna. So if you're tuning this and you fold back like 10 inches, oh gosh, I wish that would happen, but you fold back 10 inches, that's gonna increase the impedance on that antenna. So when you're all done, you trim that off and then you, you'll see the Z drop. So there's, there's things that's some trial and error. That's experience that you get. That's experience that new hams get. That's why I'm promoting this antenna so much. And yeah, I mean, it's already coming out favorable with this antenna. I ran the poll, the poll shows what it is. It's still on my Twitter page. Which antenna do you think would be better? Um, again, I have a couple of disclaimers at the end. So the other thing with this is the connectors I was talking about. These are susceptible to being stepped on, water in them, rain, uh, being crushed, dust, mud. I'm always blowing them out. Uh, getting it into your radio terminal points. Uh, you know, it's just a risk, you just gotta be careful, but it is there. And again, if you break it, it's done. The other thing, uh, I've been able to work 40 through 10 meters on this antenna. I'm gonna take a guess that I can on this one as well, though I haven't yet. Uh, but you know, when we do all of our testing, I'll probably do some testing on RBN and see how they go 40 through 10, but primarily because these antennas are cut, tuned, and ready to go for 20 meters. That's the band that I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna cut and make sure they tune exactly for 20 meters. You're gonna see all that in part two will be the sterile environment. I'll get to that in just a second. Let me finish a couple other things. So what's the other thing with this? I've already cut and tuned this, I already know. 1.1 to 1.7 at the max on a funky setup across the entire 20 meter band. And I'm right at 50 ohms, plus or minus, depending upon the setup. When I built it in a sterile environment, one to one, dead flat, 50 ohms. That's how I built it in the sterile environment right here in my front yard. If I set it up in a funky area, yeah, you get some variances. That's why I use my tuner, though it's not needed, but that's why I use my tuner just to take out that slack a little bit and just make sure everything's nice and uh, happy on the inside of the radio. If you don't have a tuner, it's okay, you're, you're tuned. It's not gonna kill it. Um, because this one may have stretch or because it's a prototype or because a lot of different, I don't wanna say excuses, but reasons to have doubt and I wanna take all doubt out of it, uh, I'm going to put this on the analyzer and tune it. I'm gonna get to how I'm gonna do that uh, shortly. But I know for a fact, that is, when I built it, dead on one to one, 50 ohms. Uh, this one, we'll find out when we have to when we redo the videos for that section. Um, <clears throat> the other thing, if this thing is, is dead on, then I already have an answer to how resistant it is to funky portable field setups. It, it, it veers quickly if that's the case, but I wanna further prove that point. I already know this is, and I'll prove it again in subsequent field tests in part three of this uh, video series, 
Uh, I've set this up in some wild conditions and nothing's a perfect 45. One might be and one might be, you know, 80 degrees or not 80, but you know, you get some different variances on one leg or the other. You got a boulder right underneath it. I mean, it's not exactly all the way up a quarter wavelength. Those variances, I've still been able to work uh, with that speaker wire antenna all day long. So one thing I do know is this right here has been working for me consistently across the United States. I've got an entire video series uh, on this channel to prove that. This one right here, I think it can too. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do everything I can to get it where I know this is at, or at least verify it and prove all that to you. I think it can do the same exact thing. I'm not saying one is better than the other when it comes to testing. That's, that's what I can't wait to do the testing for. And I'll explain the methodology on the testing uh, here in just a second. Um, so I need to retune that or verify tuning on the K9 ARV, formerly known as K9 ARV uh, dipole antenna. So uh, what are my part two? My part two of this video series is going to be these antennas set up side by side, stand off of course, so they're not gonna interfere with one another. But basically, I'm gonna set them up exactly the same in a park up the street from my house, wide open field, nothing around it, and I'm gonna have it set up as an inverted V, 45 degree angle. I might even measure how far each leg is off so I can get it as just about as perfect as I can so that I know that the deployment is identical. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up my KX2 to my MacBook and I'm gonna send out CW signals so that I can look and see where it's going at 10 watts on both antennas and what those signal reports are on the RBN. Uh, and then we'll just see from there. And then I'm also gonna do some sideband contacts I'll put it on Twitter and I hope you guys are connecting to Twitter and I'll post in advance before I do this so you know what day that field test will take, that, that sterile field test I should say, uh, will take so it's the perfect environment so that you can participate on sideband and uh, hear how it sounds on your end and then you can make comments, you can say, I heard this and this, I, I, in my opinion, that this one sounded better than that one type thing. And of course all that will be recorded on my end for part two of the video and the RBN reports. So part three of this video series is gonna be the field test. I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna go out to the field now in these funky environments, and that's where I think the only real difference I'm gonna get is then I'll know the tune exactly the same, and then what I'm gonna get there is I'm gonna get those funky setups out in wild field areas, and I'll be way far away from any RF in the city, <clears throat> excuse me, so I'll be able to see how well these antennas perform uh, out in the field doing uh, summits on the air in a real environment. Uh, and the same thing, sideband, you'll get my alerts, it'll be a SOTA operation, and I will also bring the laptop, and I'll probably make one or I'm not hiking all the field, and I'll remember my cord this time, by the way. And then we'll see what those RBNs look like, and then we'll be able to have real results. <clears throat> I will say this, uh, Tony, I love you like a brother. We've had some, uh, some arguments, debates, spirited debates, some other people chiming in. I want everybody watching this video to know one thing. Tony and I are friends, and I don't care what antennas outperforms the other one because every single antenna, if you've been a ham for two days, you know this, every single antenna has pros and cons. They're all in essence a compromise. And if this one, Tony's, let's say, has a stronger signal report than this one by a DB or whatever it is, I know that I would still probably pick this one because of the work I've got into uh, all these different videos, but because of the durability, because the experience of building it, to me, those are intangibles. The, the, what I'm trying to share with the ham community, get other people to actually make an antenna and try it and use it. And, and I remember when I did this with my daughter, I made a 20 meter antenna with her, put it up on the house, and the first contact was a 5.9 plus to uh, Russia. Propagation was excellent. And her eyes went, whoa, she was 10 years old at the time. And I hope some new hams out there, and I've been getting tons of DMs on uh, emails, I get Twitter DMs, I get YouTube messages, I get a lot of comments from everybody that's making them from Italy to all across the US to Canada, South America, I've got people in Australia, I've got people all over the world that saw that video and made their own antenna and have been having a kick in the pants doing parks on the air, summits on the air, or just field operations. And that to me is what it's all about. So with that, it doesn't really matter which antenna has one signal strength or the other. They're both probably gonna turn out to be great antennas. 
Uh, Tony and I are friends no matter what you've been seeing the banter on Twitter about. Uh, go back and read all that for your enjoyment. If you're chiming in and thinking Tony and I are anything other than friends, well, you stand corrected and you should stand by uh, because you know who you are. And maybe read the entire thread before you comment, I would suggest, or as much as possible. But even though Tony and I go back and forth, and mathematically things are one way or the other, uh, you know, Mike Kate MRD, he said something I think I'll just end with on a note. There's just something magical about the KG6 HQD speaker wire antenna. So with that, I'll sign clear, and uh, I look forward to doing part two of this video, the, the, uh, the sterile field test. And uh, do me a favor, drop some comments and say anything you want to say. Uh, but the idea is to go have fun and make a friggin' antenna and play radio, not banter on Twitter or any other groups, uh, unless it's all in good fun, and which it has been, because Tony and I have been texting on the side about this whole thing too. So anyways, with that, 73, we'll catch you on the next one.